Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Marianne and this is Marshlight. This is the first painting in a series of 12 in the Square Foot Show and is one of three landscape pieces featuring the sub-theme Afterglow. This marsh is just down the street from my home in beautiful North Bay, Ontario, and it's where I retreat to when I need time to recharge. It is such a privilege to paint this beautiful place and to share it with you. Let's get started. I am using the same color palette for all of the pieces in the landscape series, which consists of cadmium yellow medium, cadmium orange, quinacridone red, ultramarine blue, titanium white, and burnt umber. Just like in my other acrylic painting tutorials, I don't use black, but instead mix my darks using a combination of burnt umber and ultramarine. To help the paint dry a little bit quicker, I add in a tiny amount of Winsor & Newton's liquid, which means that the paint will typically dry overnight as opposed to taking days. Working in oil is a different experience from working in acrylics. In acrylics, I can think and work in layers and will typically wash in the sky first before adding in clouds on top. With oils requiring at least overnight to dry, I usually do the entire sky in the first shot, but carefully apply the purest colors first to ensure that they don't get muddied. In this case, I worked in the oranges first before adding in the mauves of the sky. I worked my way down using one brush per color without switching them to prevent cross-contamination. Once the sky was in, I did a quick block in of the remaining colors to create a layer of the approximate colors and values for the piece. I like to eliminate blank canvas as quickly as possible when I'm working so that I can accurately read my colors within the context of the painting. This first layer isn't perfect, but it helps me make more informed decisions as I continue to work. If you're new to my channel, you might wonder why I paint on a yellow canvas. I prime, tone, and sand my canvases in both acrylic and oil paintings, and a full video of this process is available under the Foggy Fence acrylic painting tutorial, and I've linked it above. The next day, when the first layer was dry, thanks to the liquid, I used one of my favorite tricks to make the trees look as though they were backlit. Whatever color of the sky the tree is standing in front of, I use a slightly darker value of that same color and sketch in the tree first. I like to move from warm to cool as I move farther away from the sun, going from orange to pink to purple. Then I layer in the dark tree over top, flicking the brush to blend the two colors. It's a very effective technique for making the trees appear to have a halo of light. Next, I corrected the color of the snow on the marsh and warmed it from blue to purple. You may notice me using a long dowel with a taped ball at the end. This is a mall stick, which is a wonderful tool that I use often in oil painting. It's homemade with supplies I picked up at Home Depot and allows me to draw a straight line or just steady my hand when I need to do some fine detail work. I finished up the day by sketching in the darker values in the foreground before leaving the painting to dry overnight. After my tree line had dried, I sketched in some of the trees and grasses on the opposite shoreline using a liner brush. This brush that I'm using is the Black Gold by Dynasty Mini Liner Brush in size 20 0, and I used it for the majority of the grasses in this painting. The trick with this is subtlety. I am using a color in a very similar but slightly lighter value to the tree line, and the grasses are only slightly darker than the snow. Everything in the distance fades, so contrast between colors and values are reduced the farther away that the objects are. Here is where I should have taken my own advice. On the left side of the inlet, I painstakingly went through and added in all of the grasses in layers, piece by piece. Because the grasses at the back are farther away, I could have worked a bit more quickly by using softer strokes that were less defined, working wet into wet and adding more defined strokes after that first layer had dried. 
Instead, I added each and every individual blade of marsh grass. While I'm still happy with how the final painting turned out, it was long and a little tedious. The water reflection was a little tricky as I had to put it in prior to adding the grasses that it was reflecting. This is where I really had to focus on painting what I saw. As you can see, I went in straight without using an underlying drawing. This meant really focusing on painting what I saw and not what I thought was there. While it may look like I'm using black, it's actually a very dark mauve. I try to avoid using absolute black anywhere in my paintings, except where I want to pull focus. Before I could paint the grasses that were hovering over the water, I had to ensure that the reflection was completely dry. This meant some patience on my behalf having to wait a day between the left grass and the water reflection, the right grass, and then the grass hanging over the reflection, followed by another day waiting for the snow, and another one for the grass touch-ups. While this painting would have likely taken only four days of full work, adding the dry time extended that, and this entire piece was painted more slowly over eight days. On the right side of the inlet, I tried another method of putting everything in while wet, knowing that it would be slightly out of focus due to the automatic blending that would occur. Then once it was dry, I could add in a sharper layer on top. In the future, I'd like to develop this technique a little more. I started my practice as an acrylic painter and that sometimes influences how I approach oils. One of my future goals is to develop my alla prima style, which is where you do the majority of the work in one sitting or while the paint is still wet, so you're not adding liquid in. While I'm happy with how this painting turned out, and I do think it's a strong work, when I look more critically at how I could grow as an artist, I'd like to loosen up my strokes a bit more and work more efficiently with both my brushwork and color. Once everything was in, I spent an hour or so tidying up. I allowed the painting to dry overnight so that I could sign my name once the piece had thoroughly dried, in case I made a mistake and needed to wipe my signature and try again. When I make a mistake with oils, if the layer underneath it is dry, I'll use some liquid on a Q-tip to erase my mistakes. After allowing the paint to dry for a week, I varnish with two thin coats of my usual Camar by Krylon, and the painting is complete. Thank you so much for following along with this tutorial. If you enjoyed the video, I would love if you would like and subscribe, or leave me a comment with any questions. You can follow me on Instagram, at Maryam Vanderdusen, or on Facebook by searching Maryam Vanderdusen Visual Artist. All of the paintings in the Square Foot Show will be available for sale on my website upon completion of all 12 works. You can sign up to my email newsletter to be notified of new works as they are completed, and upon signing up, you'll also receive a copy of my free 36-page Introduction to Acrylic Painting ebook as a thank you for being part of this journey. I can't wait to share the next painting in this series with you as we're heading deeper into the woods of Northern Ontario. Keep making your life beautiful, and I'll see you in the next video.